Welcome to the Glebe. I'm fishing my favourite wintertime method on this flyer today, on the bomb and corn. It's a method I've caught literally thousands and thousands of carp on over the last 20 or so years and won plenty of matches. Um, so when I get this fish in, I'll show you my simple setup. I've uh, only been fishing here 15 minutes or so, and uh, this is my second fish I've got on. First fish was about six pound, nice common, and this feels quite a nice fish too. Um, today I'm using 017 up length of about 25 inches. That's why you might think I'm taking my time, whereas, alright, it's not proper cold yet, but the water's down to about 10 degrees, and that sort of temperature is when I consider, you know, one of your main tactics has got to be the bomb and corn. I've got a lot of confidence in it once the water goes down to about that temperature. It's no good trying to fish it when it's above that, you know, 12, 14 degrees. You need to be feeding bait, but the way I'm fishing this, you're not feeding anything. You're just making sure you're making a really good cast, nice and tight to the island, within a metre of the island. Uh, the most important thing with the cast, is sl the technique's slightly different to what I'd use if I was feeder fishing, but because I'm using the long tail, uh, 25 inches or sometimes 30 inches, uh, the, the bit at the end of the cast, which I consider the most important thing, whereas on the feeder you'd make it hit the clip and feather it down so it just plops in lightly. With the bomb, you, you're firing it a bit harder and uh, just before the bomb hits the water, once it's reached the distance, you stop it dead. And what that does is catapult the corn and the hook length that bit further than the, the lead. So it lands in a straight line and then you, you're making it sink on a straight line. So you've, you've got your, your rod on the feeder arm and just slowly sinking your line. You're not moving the bomb, you're just trying to sink the line just slowly with the reel handle until it's all under. And then rather than tighten up like you see a lot of anglers do, I prefer to leave it slack. I say slack, it's never really slack because you've got the weight of the line. Um, there's always a bit of tow or a bit of drift on the lake. So you're always in touch with, with the bomb. That gives you just a very slight curve or you'd see the line going into the water. And that's a great indicator to see what fish are in your peg and uh, you know it gives you confidence even if you're not getting bites it gives you confidence that there's fish in your peg and it's just working out how to catch them the, ba the basic approach I go for when I'm fishing the glebe is I've already said is to cast it within a meter of the far bank but it's really important to lay it out in a straight line you've really got to see your corn land on its own further than than the lead and then you're in a good chance of uh, getting a bite but sometimes depending on what line as you get the fish can be closer or one way of the peg or the other and it's just a, just a case really of seeing what the other anglers are doing and if they're catching doing something different to you then you need to think you know if you're not catching or you're getting beat what else you can do it's looking very similar size fish to the first one I had but there's never a rush you know I've got a long hook length on there, which makes a, although it's only 017, which is quite a light hook length for the glean, 
it makes it stronger because it's long and I'm using a size 18 KKMB hook which is a weaker version to the KKH but it's lighter so I believe you get uh, you know more bites and hookups fishing a hook like that So there it is, hooked nicely. You can see it's a really small hook. I'm a right fan of uh, small hooks. And you can see that you'd never pull that hook out. You'd break the line before you'd done it. So, you know, that's why I've got a lot of confidence in small hooks. I think if you lightly hook a fish with a small hook, you've got more chance of, of landing the fish rather than lightly hooking a, a fish with a big hook, you're more likely to pull out. And that's always been a theory. So let's show you my simple setup. So let's start from the rod end. You can see it's quite annoying really sometimes like this, how it keeps slipping down, but something you have to put up with because although it's not a rule on the Glebe that your feeder has to be running, um, I do like these these leads, you know, the, the, the really simple setup, tangle free, you never get a tangle in them and it's all in line so it cannot tangle so what I'm using is an ICS match cube in 20 gram and although this is quite a long chuck here it's one of the longest chucks on the, the Glebe I'm on a really good peg here no point on sitting on the bad end when I'm trying to uh, demonstrate bomb and corn fishing uh, but I'm only using 20 gram weight they go up to 45 grams there's 30 gram there's 15 20 uh, 13 or 45 but you'd say that would be too light for the 50 yards so I'm casting here 45 50 yards I'm casting but the reason I'm doing that is because I've explained about the cast and um, you don't want a big commotion when the lead hits the water when you're fishing bomb and corn so it's really important to, to you know file that lead over really fast and stop it just as the the bomb's about to hit the water so it, it lays everything out. And these are really, I'll just show you how I put it together. They come uh, just as that. So you've got the, the tube in the middle which slips off if you want to ch um, change into a, a bigger lead. There's a tail rubber on the top which keeps the lead on, you know, when you've got a fighting fish on. And then what you've got here is a method stop bead which fits nicely in there there's just a bit of tension there that makes it a semi-bolt rig um, so down from that I've got a nice big loop uh, it's a four turn loop knot and I've said about the long hook length being really strong because it's got stretched the power line has it makes it a really strong setup so that's the same reason I use a, a long loop because it, it, it gives it more strength and that's just hooked into the, the method stop bead if I pull that apart there there's a little hook there that you can hook that hook length over like so and then it hooks back on and then when you push the, the soft be uh, bead over the hook you know that cannot come off so coming down from that I'll let that slip down to the tip I've got 25 inches of 017 power line and this is important to me because like I've said before you're trying to straighten it out you want to see your corn land past your bomb and you've stopped everything so it, it, it sinks on a straight line I wouldn't if I didn't see that corn land further than my bomb I'd reel it in and cast again you know that's really in my head that you know I've got to be confident I'm gonna get a bite you sometimes you're sitting there 15 20 minutes for a bite when it's really bad and it gets really cold so you need to have it in your head that you know there's a good chance of getting a bite so all the way down uh, to a size 18 KKMB which is the lighter version of the KKH uh, they rarely go blunt they keep, you catch 100 pound fish on the same hook and it's still really sharp alright I've only caught two fish because I've not been fishing long today but that's my favourite hook for bomb and corn fishing and you can see that's uh, the, the grain of corn I caught that fish in and believe it or not that looks like to me it's been down its throat although it was only lip hooked and this leads me on to my theory why the fish 
can hook against the hook without any lead, without bolting off any, any weight, because the, the actual bait on the hair puts the hook into the fish's lip. So that's why I've got no fear of fishing fairly slack from the rod tip to the, to the lead. Once that fish picks up that grain of corn, or it might be a lasso pellet, um, the weight of the bait will put the hook in, in, the fish's, in the fish's lip, regardless of much tension. It's different with the, the big carp anglers, because obviously they're using a lot bigger hooks and it's you know heavier gauge wire, so they need something to bolt against. But for me, you know, with a really small, fine wire sharp hook, then that's going to go in its mouth. So I just take that off there. And you see it's curled up a bit because I've just caught that couple of fish on it. But you've got a hair there of about 20 mil, say 20 mil. Um, and then a quick stop's been knotted onto that with a small loop. And that hair length is important um, because the Nuffy corn I'm using here today is quite a big size. You see there's a lot of big pieces in that. And you see I've just picked 30 or so grains up there in my hand and it, you can select the size grain to the size hair you've tied the hook. So for that there's just one piece of corn there that stands out to me which is going on the on on the hair just now and that's that it's just more visible uh, and that's a good tip that you know get a, a small handful of corn and just look at it and most of the time you'll get quite a big piece of corn that just stands out. And obviously the fish will see the same on the bottom of the lake. And it's just a cruising fish that will come see that and pick it up. So that's the one I'm choosing. And to mount that on the hair, firstly put the needle inside the quick stop in the right end. So that goes in the hole in the end of the quick stop. And uh, because well, for, for any range cast really, I've learned this over the years. I've hooked it, I've gone through that way sometimes, um, through the other way, the opposite, which all work. But the trouble is doing that, you know, that way and that way, I find you get more spin-ups on the retrieve. When you've not caught a fish, you, it doesn't matter how fast or slow you retrieve, you end up with a big twist in your hook length. So the best way I've found of getting around that is to put it in the side just sort of half distance from the open end to the round end and just push it all the way through so that the hair comes out the other side, it's just come outside a bit so I'm going to have to do that again. Uh, but once that's in there like that, you pull the needle out and then just uh, pull that and that's on but I'm not really happy with that because um, you know, so if I was in a match I'd take that off and, and, and go through the the sequence again so put the, the needle in the end of the quick stop and again pick 20 or 30 40 or so grains up and again there's a few big bits in there but to me that's going to be the most visible bit so that's the bit that's going on the hook so same same procedure through the side of the corn and this time try and get it out the other end just like that and once you've took the needle out just slip the the quick stop back to the corn and uh, the idea as well as not getting the twist is when that's on the bottom that's laying flat so it's very easy for the fish to see you know it's not standing up on its side like it would be if you'd gone through the narrow end of the corn so that's the way I go about hooking the corn so I've shown you how to hook the corn uh, I've told you how to cast it so I'm going to demonstrate that now so just before the cast, I'm going to let the lead slip back onto the method stop lead. And I'm going to wind up exactly the same for feeder fish in this. You want about two to three foot hanging down from your rod. And then you open the bell arm. If you can, with your middle finger. You know, that's the longest finger in your hand. And it reaches the spool very easily. And it's very, it's the most accurate way of knowing when to let go of the line as, you, as you're about to cast. And when you come back, I'm aiming at that white post over there. Um, so when I come back, the, the lead's just gone missing my rod. And I've got a quite a stiff 
wind from left to right here so I'm going to have to aim probably two yards to my left to make it land on that white post. So here we go, proof of the pudding. And that's just about crack on that is. So I'll just stop that, like I said, I just stop that bomb just before it hit the water and I see my corn land just that bit further and because my feeder arm's where my rod should be after I've made that cast, so it's right below it, I've just placed it on the on the rod rest and I'm not even I've not even touched my handle and I'm burying the line. It's just two foot more to go under now. It's all under. So I'm just gonna bring the, the rod tip up and you, you can see I'm just gonna put the bell arm over and I'm ready for a bite. So I've demonstrated the perfect cast. Um, now I'm gonna have a few words, talk about location and where you want to be fishing uh, because I fish the glebe regular and this is important if you go to a place regular then you get to know you know where the fish get caught a lot and where they prefer to be during a match I'm not saying that's the same place as when you're pleasure fishing but it's the anglers because because uh, the fish tend to go over there especially the colder it gets and the further the fish are from you especially in the early stages of the match at the glee so you know naturally that's where you want to be casting or concentrating you know trying to catch your fish from the area you're trying to catch your fish from um so you're looking um you know within a yard of the far bank most of the the bank that you chuck out at the glebe on all the lakes are undercut and that's mostly from the fish some of it's from the waves, you know, there's a, lot, there's a few waves over there with the wind we've got on today, but most of the undercut is made from the fish. A lot of the anglers throw the feeders over there and the, the fish feeding on the bait just scores the, the, the bank out. And that's just a natural hiding place for the fish, especially, you know, when the, when the water drops down in temperature, the fish get sensitive. A lot of the time they don't want to be bothered and that's an ideal place for them to to live so that's where you need to be fishing but you know I used to spend years and years at makings really good fishery won lots of money in matches there and um, but the lakes are sort of slightly different in design whereas you've got a uh, lake four for example and some of the other big lakes where you've got anglers opposite you no island but you've got deep water in a bowl so you know, for that reason, the fish can retreat to the ends, which sometimes are good pegs, but most of the time you've got fish in the middle. You know, the fish will back off from each bank and end up in that middle area. So rather than chuck down the middle straight away in that situation, you'd fish a bit short of the middle, you know, without gaining the other guy's peg who's opposite you, and just feel your way around, you know, and say, you see there, my rod, my rod end, it's really slack. And, and, and really, rather than look at the tip for liners, I'm looking at the line that goes into the water. That's the most, that's more sensitive than any tip. And by watching for liners, and you can get a good idea of, you know, where the fish are in your peg. You know, you might want to chuck left and right. You see a fish top, that's a good indication, you know, that there might be a few more fish or a group of fish there. So you you know, that'd be a good indication to a target place to fish. And I've drawn this peg one or two, one or two times in matches on here, not as often as uh, a lot of the draw bags down here. But on, a, on the occasions of drawing it in the winter, then where I'm fishing, I've had my few fish already today, you can start catching there and then you'll dry up for some reason. And so it's worth, you know, just just chucking along the bank a bit but and this is how you learn what the way fish behave during the match uh, because it's an M peg it's a really good peg this is and they're getting away from it and um, but because it's an M peg and most of the anglers are going down the lake then they don't really want to be bothered or even feed like once uh, the water starts to get down cold where the bomb corn really scores 
and the fish will just trap round a bit and get into the end of the lake as long as you've got the depth tight to the bank and that's where they're happy in, in um, you know where they want to sit they've, I've caught a few you know in front of me and the fish start to back off and they can move during the day so it's worth a chuck there we'll just keep your eyes out bubbles bubbles um, you know even at distance you can see an odd bubble popping you know that's indication of fish in the winter and it's just worth just keeping your eye open especially if it's flat calm for fizzy bubbles um, got a few coming up on my bomb and pellet line have been feeding from the off so you know hopefully we can I can drop down on that if I'm not if I stop catching on the bomb and corn and, and start catching on that so you know in, in conclusion then just keep your eyes open your eyes on the other anglers see where they're catching as well and uh, just search around your peg if you you know if you if you, your bites dry up but keep an eye on them liners and that'll tell you where you know give you a good idea how many fish are in your peg so if you've enjoyed this video and want to see plenty more like this don't forget to subscribe to the preston innovations youtube channel completely free and it's bound to put more fish in your net